Hi there, I hope your day is going great today. And uh, today we're gonna to talk about closing and funding. So that means if we're talking about closing and funding that we've gone a long way through the process already and we're almost there. Now understand that these are two very different and distinct events. There's the closing and then there's the funding. And I bring that up because a lot of times this will confuse buyers and they think that when they've closed, um, also that they, that they own the house and that can create a lot of uh, you know, just a lot of problems right near the end of the transaction. So first, let me basically uh, go over what a closing is. So a closing is when both parties, the buyer side and the seller side, uh, sign off on all the documents that officially transfer ownership uh, on the property. And this is typically done at a title company. Now, after everybody signs all the necessary documents, the lenders typically want to gonna want to review them really quickly. And after all, they're, you know, they're the bank, they're lending you a lot of money, and they just want to make sure that the I's are dotted and that the T's are crossed and everything's good to go. So once that gets approved and the title company has everything that they need, they're going to request uh, the bank to release the funds. Now, the title company will receive those funds, and then they're going to disperse them accordingly. And once they've sent that money out, then that means the loan is officially funded. So basically that means that the seller has received their money and the house is now really and officially yours. And that uh, the funding also marks the time when, when you as the new buyer are entitled to receive the keys to the house. Now I've just gone through this long explanation of the process because it's a big source of, of a lot of last minute stress. So we've got the closing, which is when you sign the paperwork and we've got the funding when everybody gets paid. And that's kind of what denotes the two. And that becomes important again. So for example, if you're the buyer and you close later on in the day, let's say sometime after 3 p.m. and for whatever reason, the loan doesn't fund that day, well now you, you're you not allowed to get the keys until the following day. Well, now if you're the buyer, what if you've got a moving company that you're paying by the hour and they've already got all your stuff loaded and the truck is parked out by the house and you already gave up the keys to your old house and you got the dogs in the crates and the kids are crying and you're trying to figure out where you're gonna stay for the night. You see how that can just add more and more stress to the situation? So it's good to know this kind of stuff up front. And remember that can be doubly hard around a holiday. So what I always try to tell my buyers is, uh, is you wanna close on or before noon and typically at least two days before a weekend or a holiday. That way, uh, for instance, if you close on a Thursday and something happens, it's not as big a deal. Um, you know, come Friday, you can get the keys before the weekend starts or whatever, maybe even later on in the day on Thursday. So that gives you a little bit of padding uh, in, you know, in the process. Now, I hope this helps you understand the home buying process. And of course, I don't expect you to be an expert, but at least now you have a good idea of what to expect along the whole way. And uh, you can always feel free to ask me any questions and I'll be updating you uh, along the whole way as well and so so thanks a lot and now let's go out and find you a house that you can pay off in 10 to 12 years